Dupont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry, presents The Cavalcade of America, starring Audie Murphy and featuring Robert Hastings and Rosemary Rice in The Fields Are Green. Tonight we bring you the story of two young American farmers, Walt and Bill Carlin of Copesville, Pennsylvania. With Audie Murphy as Walt, here is our DuPont play, The Fields Are Green. I can see the only reason I'm starting this story is because I've got two years on my brother Bill. Other than that, we're all even. Equal partners right down the line. Exactly uh, where to begin is kind of a problem, but I expect the time we had our little run-in with Ed Johnson is about the best place to start. Well, Bill and I were just ambling down the road when along came Ed and that jalopy of his. Hey, look out! Hi, Walt! Bill? Oh, hello, Mr. Johnson. Hi. You and Bill there interested in making a few pennies? Sure. All right, climb on up. Okay. What are you boys arguing about? Never knew you to have words, but driving up, it looked like you were debating politics or something. Well, we weren't arguing. I was just trying to help Bill here memorize the creed of the Future Farmers of America. He's joining up tomorrow. Well, that a fact. Sure is. Future Farmers of America. Well, you know what I think, boys? I think there ain't going to be no such thing as a future farmer of America. Why do you say that? Well, because to farm, you got to have land worth farming. And what do you have around here? Just look around and see for yourself. Worn out, washed out, gashed gullies and grubby land. That's what. Well, I don't know about that. They tell us in school there's lots to be done with it if it's worked right. You go to that agricultural high school over at Unionville? That's right. And I'm starting this time. Well, uh, don't get the idea I'm against education. I'm not. I just wish I had the chance you young fellas have. But if I had your opportunity, you know what I'd do? What? I'd use up every ounce of education I could get to get me off the farm. But we like farms. You don't know nothing about it. Now, yeah, someday you'll learn. Hop off. Yes. All right, now grab those spades over there and help me load up that wagon. With what? Topsoil. Topsoil? You mean you're going to strip the topsoil off? Sure. Need about six tons of it. Going to pile it into my barn and try to raise a crop of mushrooms. Wait a minute. You can't do that, Mr. Johnson. Why can't I? It's my farm. But stripping off the topsoil, it's, it's the worst thing anyone can do to a farm. You don't say. And if you do that, you'll ruin everything. With the topsoil gone, nothing will hold water, and the roses will uh, set in. Uh, never mind the lecture, Walt. I ain't in the mood. Now, there's half a buck apiece for your boat. No. Huh? Won't do it. Neither will I. Why, we just as soon kick a dog or, or beat a horse as strip topsoil off a farm. It's just as bad. No, it ain't. It's worse, and we ain't going to do it. Come on, Walt. It was the same night, I remember that. We finished dinner, finished helping Mom clean up, and then we sat down in the living room. Bill and I were still boiling mad over our run-in with Mr. Johnson. Stripping topsoil off the farm. Imagine that, Dad, and he's the one that's crying that the land is worn out. Well, when a farmer gets really hard up for a money crop, I suppose he's got to turn to something. But, Dad, he's ruining the land. I don't know, Bill. So easy to pass judgment when you're not personally involved. Oh. I can understand Johnson's attitude. The farms hereabouts are in a bad way. Yeah, but ours is no exception. Well, there's nothing wrong with Long Meadow, Dad. There's nothing much good about it. Now, we've had two tenants trying to farm it the last few years with no luck at all. Matter of fact, now that the subject has been brought up, I... Well, I suppose this is as good a time as any to tell you what your mother and I have decided to do. What's that? Well, we Walt, we're going to sell the place, if we can. Sell Long Meadow? Oh, no, Dad. Well, it isn't what your father wants to do, boy. There's just no choice. I've got too much cash tied up in the place. Luckily, I've got my job in Coatesville, so... 
Well, we can always manage. But, Dad, the idea when you bought the farm was to get us out of the city, wasn't it? Now, now what happens? Do we have to go back to town? I'm afraid we'll have to. Believe me, boys, your mother and I have thought about this, talked about this for a long time. There's just no other thing we can do. As soon as I get a buyer, we sell the farm. thinking the same thing. Yeah, I bet we could at that. Well, it's an idea. Yeah. See, Walt. Huh? I'm hungry. So am I. Did you notice if any plum cake was left at dinner? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Let's go get it. Okay. Wait a minute, sir. Oh, come on. Hey, wait a minute. Fifty fifty? The cake? <laughs> no, I mean the farm. Sure. Equal partners, the both of us. Good, come on. Yeah, we could do it, Walt. We could even give up at school. Sure, we could. Hey, wait a minute. What's the matter? I hear someone in the kitchen. Hold it. I got it, you're right. Come on. We'll rush him. Ready? Ready. Let's go. We got you. Dad. Oh, Dad, we thought it was someone breaking in. What are you doing up so late? Plum cake. Any less? No, not much. Well, that's a fine thing. Imagine food right out of your children's mouth. With your appetite, it's the only way you can get it. Oh, Dad. Yeah, besides, I, I couldn't sleep. Neither could we. You don't like the idea of selling long metal, do you, Dad? I hate it, Walt. Then why do it? I told you why. Dad, Dad, will you listen to an idea we have? Well, sure, Bill. Well, it's just this. We want to run Long Meadow. Me and Walt. Just you two? Just us. Oh, it'd be too much. No, sir, no, it wouldn't. Look, Dad, the tenants couldn't make a go of it because in the first place, look how they tried to farm. Well, Bill and I think we have a better way. And if we do it, we have at least two advantages over the tenants. What's that? Well, we've got no family to support and no rent to worry about. Yeah, that's true. And we want a strict business deal. Any improvements we make will add to the value of the property, and that's yours instead of rent. Well. And in eight years, we pay you $4,500. And that's what you paid for the place, wasn't it? That's right. Plus uh, $2,000 profit? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, what about operating capital? We'll get it at the bank. <laughs> Just like that, huh? <laughs> will you co-sign for us? Oh, might. Well, uh, will you? Please, Dad. Looks like you've got your heart set on this. Oh, you bet. Lots of easier ways to earn a living, you know. Maybe so. But for Bill and me, this is it. Well, Dad? All right, boys. Looks like you've made a deal. Oh, Walt, we're in. <laughs> That's great. Shake, pardon. Oh, boy. Yes. And we'll go down to Coatesville tomorrow and get all the papers drawn up. If we're going anywhere tomorrow, I suggest we get to sleep now. It must be three in the morning. Come on. Okay. Hey, wait a minute. Huh? What's the matter, Bill? I just remembered something. Uh, I'm still hungry. Oh, come on. <laughs> my coming in the back way. I saw the kitchen light on. Oh, that's all right. I, um, think I've got a date with Walt tonight. You think you have? Well, lately I'm never sure. Last week we were supposed to go roller skating, and instead I sat around watching Walt and Bill put up the new chicken house. Oh. <laughs> and the week before that, that was when the feed mixer broke down, and Walt was up half the night getting it running again. Well, I don't think any great emergency has happened in the last hour or two. <laughs> At least nobody told me about it. Boys are probably out in the porch. Mrs. Carlin, can I ask you something? Of course, Dory. Do you... Do you think the boys have taken on too much? 
Oh. Well, what do you think? Gosh, I don't know. My dad and, and all the other farmers around are having such a tough time just making ends meet, and, well, the boys are starting from scratch with hardly anything. Hmm? Hardly anything. Except faith in the land. And that's a lot. It's going to be awfully hard. Yes, it is going to be hard. But that's the only thing worth fighting for, Dory, the thing that comes hard. You're right. And that's something worth waiting for, too. Yes, it is. I'll wait. Well, I, I'll go fetch your farmers now. <laughs> I'm finished here. I'll go with you. All right. Hello, Mr. Carlin. Oh, evening, Dory. The boys out on the porch? Yep. Waiting on you, I think. <laughs> Thanks. What? Look, fast asleep, both of them. No wonder the way they've been working. Little boys, you've had a busy day. <laughs> you better wake them up. No, no, don't. That don't me I'll just sit down here and wake them out. Uh, Live will be a long way. That's all right. Good night, then. Good night, Mrs. Garland. As long as you're waiting, you might as well wait on this side of the swim. Oh, I thought you were asleep. You're not me. But Bill's sleeping, and for real. Come over here. You tired? I'm going to a frat. Walt, all this work you and Bill are putting into the farm, do you think it'll do any good? Sure it will. Anything that will heal up the land will help. Dams, contour strips, cover crops, will all help. Well, it's going to take a long time, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. The store's all right. It's just been neglected, that's all. A couple of years of convalescing and be good as new. Well, then what? They didn't keep it that way. But if you start growing crops on it, won't you be back just where you started? Might be. If we tried getting crops that took all the nourishment from the soil, but we're not going to do that, do we? Oh? No, we're going to give the land a long, long rest. No cultivated crops to speak of. Well, what are you going to grow? Bee. Bee? That's right. Grassland farming. Oh. Bill and I plan to rotate close-growing crops, like alfalfa, clover, wheat, barley. Crops that will hold the land in place and soak up the water. Put plenty of fat on livestock. We get western cattle in the fall and fatten them up over the winter and spring, market them in the summer. You see, we're going to fit our farming to the land. That makes sense, too. Oh, Walt, you and Bill are going to put this across. I just know you are. Rooting for it? All the time. Thanks. You're a, you're a pretty nice girl, Dawn. Oh, I'm glad you think so. I've always thought so. Well, you might tell someone. Why keep it a secret? You're okay. I, I'm telling you. You're a pretty nice girl. Please? Hmm? You just said that. And you know something else? What? I think we'll make a pretty good pair. Well, Walt, this is so sudden. Bill, you possum. We thought you were asleep. Well, uh -uh. If you're not, you should be. Now, go and close your eyes. Oh, not me. Not your little old partner, Walt. I've got to help on all the uh, chores. We are partners, aren't we? Look, partner. We may be 50-50 in lots of things, but you just close your eyes and go back to sleep, because this next little chore, I'm going to handle all by myself. Well, bless you, my children. Cavalcade of America. Audie Murphy is starring as Walt Carlin in The Fields Are Green. My brother Bill and I decided to work our family's farm. We followed a tested program taught daily in vocational ag courses and in project meetings of the future farmers of America. It's a program available to every farmer who wants to use it. Trouble is, not enough farmers seem to want to. But Bill and I did, and with good success. Hello, Walt. Hello, Mr. Johnson. Uh, 
Well, where's Bill? Haven't seen him around the last couple of days. Oh, he's in Kansas City. You don't say. Annual meeting of the future farmers. Oh, that's right. I remember you went last year. Got some kind of award. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was lucky. They, they named me Star Farmer of the Northeast Region. And you got some cash, too, didn't you? Yes, sir. $500. $500. You know what I'd do if I had that money? No, sir. What? I'd buy $500 worth of fare for me and the family and move out. And that's what you'd do if you were wise. Move out? Why should we move out, Mr. Johnson? Because you're ahead. Quit when you're ahead, boy. But we're just getting started. Getting started? For what? For the future. You know we've nursed this land along, planted post-growing crops that hold the topsoil. Well, now we're ready to buy some western cattle. Get them good and fat and make some money. And that's the whole point of our plan. Ah, punk. Now listen to me, son. Be smart and pull out while you're still young. Or you'll find the farm sitting on your shoulders and anchoring you to the dirt for the rest of your life. We're not anchored, Mr. Johnson. And we ever will be. We're just putting down roots. Well, I don't know, Walt. I've looked over your books, and while you're a lot better off than last year this time, your cash position still isn't too good. But, Dad, I tell you, it's a chance we've been waiting for. I had a call from a friend of mine in Lancaster, and... He said for me to grab up these 75 steers. He said the price will be going up every day. Well, don't you think that you ought to talk to Bill before you make up your mind, How Walt? can I, Mom? He's in Kansas City attending the convention. and I can't get hold of him. I've got to make up my mind before tonight. Well, you could just about squeeze it out. Now, maybe if you... Oh, I'll get it. Hello. Daddy, it's me, Bill. Well, son, am I glad you called. Now, look, Bill... Walt has something to tell you. Oh, I've got something to tell you, Dad. Listen, they, they've just announced the Star Farmer Award. Did you make it, Bill? Did they name you Star Farmer of the region? Dad, they named me Star Farmer of America, of the, of the whole nation. Yippee! Mom, Walt, Dory, hmm? Bill's been named Star Farmer of America. Let me talk. He was? Bill, oh, Bill, oh, it's Walt. Congratulations. Oh, gee, thanks, Walt. Let me say hello. Here's Mother. Oh. Oh, I'm so proud, Bill. It's wonderful. Oh, yes, isn't it, Mom? Oh, Mom, Mom they're calling for me. They want pictures, interviews. Oh. I've got to run now, Mom. I'll see you on Wednesday. Bye. Goodbye, dear. Golly, star farmer of the whole nation. That's terrific. It's just... Holy smokes. What is it, Walt? Bill was on the phone, and in the excitement, I forgot to ask him about the steers. Oh. Well, what are you going to do? Well, I think it's what Bill would want me to do. I'm going to buy them. And I hope it's not a mistake. Well, that'll be the last of them, Mr. Curlin. Okay. 75 head, that's right. Yeah, sign for him. Sure. Right here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, good luck to you. So long. Thanks, so long. Walt? Yes, sir? Is there something wrong with that steer? Where? The one by the fence. It doesn't seem to be able to stand on its feet. Oh, maybe just a little leg weary from the ride. Let's take a look. All right. It looks all tuckered out. Dory. What is it, Walt? Look at that glazed look in his eyes. And the way it droops his head. What's wrong? I don't know. Well, I'm not sure. But get over to the house fast and call the vet. Tell him we need him here in a hurry. Well, you got yourself a herd full of trouble here, Walt. No kidding about that. What is it? Shipping fever. Shipping fever? Yes, it's a form of pneumonia. It can run wild once it gets a hold. What do we do, Doc? Well, all the steers that are too weak to eat will have to be force fed. Black coffee is a stimulant. Raw eggs for nourishment. We'll manage that. And I'll have to inject the whole herd with anti-shipping fever serum. And I'd better get some sulfur drugs into them, too. Every eight hours. Well, that's for the whole 75? That's right. It's going to be one whale of a job. Oh, well, don't you think we ought to send for Bill? No. I got into this mess without him. I think I'd better work it out the same way. 
Well, Doc? He's gone. How do the others look? It's just too early to tell, Walt. Here's some more coffee, Walt. Thanks. I'll take care of it. You, you go back to the house. What is it? Is he? Yes, uh, this one's gone, Joey. Oh, Walt. Go on now. You, you've been on the go for 20 hours, and you've got to get some rest. I'll rest when you do. Right now, I'm going to help. <laughs> Dory, now this is enough. You've both got to be sensible. You've been up 36 hours. Except for that little cat nap just now before your lunch, you've had no sleep at all. How long do you intend to keep this up? But, Mom, I have to. There's too much at stake. Don't you see that? Doc Arnold left hours ago, and well, I've got to go... Well, then at least let Dory stay here. Yes, Dory. You better... Bill! Bill, Bill I'm glad you're back. We didn't expect you till tomorrow. Well, I just got itchy to come home a day sooner. Say, uh, Walt, who's heard of that? Look, Bill, about that. I wanted to tell you on the phone, but... You mean there are? You bought them? I hope you won't be mad, but I would have discussed it with well, you. Well, did you get a good buy? Well, I, I thought so. Well, but... that's great. But they're hungry, aren't they? Hungry? Sure. Why, those steers are standing out there bawling their heads off for something to eat. Walt, could it be? I don't know. We haven't been out there for some time, if they're hungry, you know what that means, Dory? It means they're well again. Oh, come on, let's see, Walt. Let's see. Hey, look at them. They're all right, Dory. They're all right. Oh, Walt. Of course they're all right. They're fine. Come on, come on. Stop standing there looking so pleased with yourself. Let's get to pitching hay. You pitch it, partner. I just want to hit it. Then, one evening not so long ago, after dinner, we all gathered in the living room. Mother, Dad, Bill, Dory, now Mrs. Walt Carlin, and myself. Hey, what's all the mystery? The way you herded us in here. Now, what's up? Uh, you're mighty forgetful, Dad. Oh, am I, Bill? Oh, Sure. We had a date together. We did? When did we make it? We made it eight years ago, Dad. Eight years ago? Yep, that's right. We're paying off our debt. We're buying the farm. Okay, Bill, give him the check. $6,500 and certified. $6,500? Well. That's $2,000 profit, Dad, as promised. <laughs> Boys, uh, I'll tell you something. Uh, I'll confess. Confess what, Dad? Remembering back to the night you and Bill first sprung this on me, uh, the idea that the two of you might run the farm yourself and make it pay, well, that night I wouldn't have given you a Chinese dollar for your chances. <laughs> well, you, you proved I was wrong. You know what we really proved, Dad? What's that? Just this. That the land is like anything else. Neglect it, use it, and it will die. But if you believe in it strong enough to care for it and protect it, preserve it, the fields will be green and the harvest will be good. The fields are green now for Walt and Bill Carlin. They've doubled their original farm and have proved that even the most worn-out soil can be brought back to life and production by the use of modern farming methods, by steady work and by faith in the land. Tonight in Kansas City, the future farmers of America are meeting in their annual convention. These young men of the land, following closely in the footsteps of Walt and Bill Carlin, have voluntarily chosen a way of life without which America could not exist. It's tough arduous, a never-ending battle. But theirs is the land, and they stand hard by the belief that the successful farmer of tomorrow is the future farmer of today. Our 
thanks to Audie Murphy, Robert Hastings, and Rosemary Rice, and the Cavalcade players for tonight's DuPont play, The Fields Are Green. Next week, the DuPont Cavalcade will present the popular Hollywood star, Ray Milland. Our play, The Ship the Nazis Had to Get, tells of men at sea with a cargo that had to get through submarine-infested waters with danger lurking on every wind and wave. Be sure to listen. Tonight's DuPont Cavalcade, The Fields Are Green, was prepared by Irv Tunick with the assistance of Walt and Bill Carlin. Music was composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Donald Voorhees. The program was directed by John Zoller. Audie Murphy will next be seen in the Universal International Technicolor production, The Cimarron Kid. Ladies and gentlemen, we can all be safe in our homes, at our jobs, on the highway, if we'll just work at it. Safety is no accident. It requires intelligent planning and action. The DuPont Company has found this out in achieving year after year an outstanding safety record. This week, the National Safety Council meets to plan better safety for you. It's a good time to remember that it pays to be safe. The life you save may be your own. This is Cy Harris speaking. Don't forget next week, our star, Ray Milan. Our play, The Ship the Nazis Had to Get. The DuPont Cavalcade of America comes to you from the Velasco Theater in New York and is sponsored by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. Makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Next, it's Hollywood Theater with William Powell on NBC. Mm.